What's going on everybody? I hope you're doing well. It's that wonderful time of year where the temperatures are cooling down, the leaves are changing color, and Adobe holds their annual Adobe Max conference at which they announce, generally speaking, major enhancements or major updates to their creative cloud suite, including Lightroom Classic. And with that, you can go out right now and upgrade to Lightroom Classic version 10. So I wanted to put this video out there just as a quick overview of what's new, what's changed, and some things to be aware of with this upgrade or update to Lightroom Classic version version 10, but I've also put together a couple deeper dive videos on two of the features that are worth taking a closer look at. I'll link those down below. So take a look at those two. This is just going to be a relatively quick high level overview. So you know the big picture of what's available and then you can look at those two videos to take that deeper dive into some of the bigger changes that are coming in terms of functionality. So the first thing, of course, with an update like this, there's always going to be the usual bug fixes, new camera support, new lens support, nothing too major or exciting there. So let's just jump right into the first big change you're going to see is as you go through your developing process, you're going to notice pretty quickly that split toning is no longer an option out there within your develop panel. It's been replaced with color grading. Uh, this is actually very similar to what a lot of other software solutions out there use. I'm familiar with it just from the act of using Adobe Premiere Pro. Instead of having the split toning panel with a couple sliders to help you adjust color tones for your highlights and shadows, you actually have multiple color wheels now. Uh, you actually have three options. Instead of just highlights and shadows, you can adjust the midtones as well and apply a color tone to that range. And then there's also a global adjustment that you can apply from a color grading standpoint. So it's far more powerful and it's going to really help you better dial in your coloring on your images as you go through your process flow. The other really big thing to note here is not only can you apply color tones to shadows, midtones, and highlights as well as globally, but on those first three shadows, midtones, highlights, you can also adjust the luminosity. Of of those ranges. So as you apply the color tone, you can also adjust the luminosity of that color tone, meaning you can make it darker or brighter. This doesn't really give you an alternative from your overall luminosity tools, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, overall exposure. It can work in conjunction with it, but this is tailored specifically to the luminosity around this color grading tool. So it, it's similar, but different from the other luminosity tools. But again, it's giving you more power and more refined control over dialing in the coloring of your images. So that's the first thing to be aware of. And that's the first video that you'll want to go check out. That's linked down below. Again, I take a deeper dive into this, walk you through how it works, some of the tips and tricks you can do with it, shortcuts, things like that. So definitely check that out. If you use split toning, it's going to be worth knowing how to use this new color grading tool. If you've never used split toning, it's certainly worth looking at because it is a pretty powerful tool and color grading just takes it up to another level. The next thing to point out is they have finally made some significant improvements and enhancements to the zoom functionality. I've always been a little bit jealous of people that work more on the Photoshop side than the Lightroom side because I've never been a huge fan of the way Zoom works in Lightroom, and I've always found Photoshop to be a little bit easier and more intuitive, quicker, and they've finally rectified that with Lightroom. So with this newest build, they've added in scrubby Zoom, box Zoom, keyboard shortcuts, all kinds of good stuff. Finally did away with the ratios instead of one to one, one to two, one to four, one to eight, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, whatever the heck they had. It's all percentage based now. So just like Photoshop, it's 100% zoom, 200% zoom, up to 1600% zoom, or you zoom way out. So that makes a lot more sense in terms of jumping between the two programs. You've got consistency there. So that's the second video that I've got out separately. Again, link down below. So check that out. It's not complicated, but it is basically an entire overhaul of the zoom functionality. But it's a pretty short video, so just take a look at that as well if you want to see a deeper dive of what that new Zoom stuff does for you. Let's see, looking at the notes here, some other new functionality around Tether Live View for Canon cameras. You can now hook into uh, your computer and use Live View directly within Lightroom, adjust focus and settings and things like that. So that is new with Lightroom version 10. Then you get into some minor updates, user interface updates, some font tweaking, custom sort order optimization for collections and folders, library grid, some minor adjustments. And then the next big thing to point out, and this isn't new functionality, but it's something to be aware of, is as you update to version 10 from version 9.4 or older, it is going to require you to upgrade your actual Lightroom catalog. Now, the automated process walks you through what you need to do. And part of that is it's 
copying your old catalog, creating a new version of it, and then upgrading that. But I would strongly encourage you to make a backup of your 9.4 or your older version catalog first. You should be doing that anyways. If you haven't, I believe it's under preferences and then catalog settings, you can go in there and optimize the catalog and back it up, drop the backup copy onto your desktop or somewhere else, just so you've got a safe copy, just in case something goes wrong with the upgrade process. Obviously this is a fairly significant overhaul. It actually is upgrading all your preview files as well. So you don't want to take any chances. If you have something go wrong with your catalog, you've lost all of your historical work in terms of edits and all that stuff. Definitely recommend you make that backup copy before you go through this. One cool thing is as you upgrade it, you can actually rename the catalog file. So it's a little bit more intuitive if you happen to be going through your file system and come across it, you can name it something so you know uh, exactly what it is and, and basically not to mess with it. And then the other thing to note here is the minimum operating system requirements have changed for both Mac and Windows. So if you're running on older versions, this is something you want to make a note of because you may be impacted. So for Mac OS, they no longer support High Sierra 10.13.x. The minimum version supported is now Mojave 10.14. And then on the Windows side, they've dropped support for Windows 7 completely, which is not surprising because Microsoft doesn't even support it anymore from a security patching standpoint. So if you're still on Windows 7, you want to upgrade anyways. And then they've also discontinued support for older Windows 10 versions, version 1803 and version 1809 are longer supported. You've got to be on Windows 10 version 1903 or later. I think the current version the newest version out there is Windows 10 2004, which I think is what I'm running on. So as long as you're keeping Windows updated, you should be okay, but just something to be aware of. The only other thing really worth calling out here, and I don't know if this is necessarily just psychological and I'm imagining it, but as I've been playing around, it does feel snappier, especially with that new zoom functionality. It feels like it's zooming in and out a lot quicker. And, you know, there's always that little bit of a delay for the image quality to kind of catch up as you zoom in. It's still there, but it feels significantly better. And just navigating around the software in general feels faster. So hopefully that holds true and I'm not just imagining it. Adobe's been working hard over the last several versions to continually drive improvement in terms of performance, which is always appreciated. It's not to say it's lag free. I mean, a lot of this is running algorithms that are pretty labor intensive in terms of CPU cycles, GPU cycles, all that good stuff, but it does feel a little bit faster. So fingers crossed again that that holds true. So that's really a high level look at what's new and enhanced and different in Lightroom Classic version 10. Again, I've got those two separate videos out there linked below that take a deeper dive into color grading, which especially you'll probably want to look at because it's very different from what you're used to with split toning and pretty powerful. And then I've got that quick video as well around the new zoom functionality and some of the keyboard shortcuts you can use with that. So as always, I hope you found this informative. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. If there's other videos you want to see in terms of Lightroom tutorials, deeper dives into the new version, drop that into the comments as well. Otherwise, as always, until next time, take care everybody.